As we come to Holy Thursday, let us begin with prayer. Gracious God, your anointed one, on the night before he suffered, instituted the sacrament of his body and blood. Mercifully grant that we may receive it thankfully in remembrance of Jesus Christ, our Lord, who in these holy mysteries gives us a pledge of eternal life. Amen. This tapestry was given to us by Bob Young, and I wanted to make sure we got it out where we could see it. And since none of you will come to church, I figured we'd show it this way. Monday Thursday, as it's often called, or Holy Thursday, that last night for Jesus on this world as a human and God, the night where he came together in the upper room, washed his disciples' feet, gave us the example of what it means to be a servant leader. Then they shared this Passover meal together, and on the table was the bread and the cup, what we have come to know as communion. I'd like to share this scripture reading for this evening, which is from the Gospel of John, chapter 13, verses 1 through 17. I'm reading tonight from the Message Bible. Just before the Passover feast, Jesus knew that the time had come to leave the world, to go to the Father. Having loved his dear companions, he continued to love them right to the end. It was supper time. The devil by now had Judas, son of Simon the Iscariot, family in his grip, all set for the betrayal. Jesus knew that the Father had put him in complete charge of everything, that he came from God and was on his way back to God. So he got up from the supper table, set aside his robe, and put on an apron. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the feet of the disciples, drying them with his apron. When he got to Simon Peter, Peter said, Master, will you wash my feet? Jesus answered, You don't understand now what I'm doing, but it will be clear enough to you later. Peter persisted, You're not going to wash my feet ever. Good old Peter, always one foot in his mouth. And Jesus answered, If I don't wash you, you can't be part of what I'm doing. Master said, Peter, not only my feet then, wash my hands, wash my head. Jesus said, If you've had a bath in the morning, you only need your feet washed now, and you're clean from head to toe. My concern, you understand, is holiness, not hygiene. So now you're clean, but not every one of you. He knew who was betraying him. That's why he said, not every one of you. After he had finished washing their feet, he took his robe, put it back on, and went to his place at the table. Then he said, do you understand what I have done to you? You address me as teacher and master, and rightly so. That is what I am. So if I, the master and teacher, washed your feet, you must now wash each other's feet. I've laid down a pattern for you. What I've done, you do. I'm only pointing out the obvious. A servant is not ranked above his master. An employee doesn't give orders to the employer. If you understand what I'm telling you, act like it and live a blessed life. Then we go over to verse 31.
When Judas had left, Jesus said, Now the Son of Man is seen for who he is, and God seen for who he is in him. The moment God is seen in him, God's glory will be on display. In glorifying him, he himself is glorified, glory all around. Children, I am with you for only a short time longer. You are going to look high and low for me, but just as I told the Jews, I'm telling you, where I go, you are not able to come. Let me give you a new command. Love one another. In the same way I loved you, you love one another. This is how everyone will recognize that you are my disciples when they see the love you have for each other. This is the mandate of all Christians. Love one another. Not just those who love you, but to love all of God's children. That mandate is the word that becomes Maundy Thursday in the name of this day also commonly known as Holy Thursday. It is Jesus' last day and yet such an important time for him in sharing what was truly important to love one another, to serve one another. And in our times where we are held at a distance, perhaps it's even more important for us to think about ways we can do that. How do we show our love when we're missing the hugs, the handshakes, the high fives? How do we come together as community when we must remain distant from one another? It's a little harder, but it's not impossible. This night, we not only celebrate the foot washing and the example of communion given to us but we recognize that later Jesus would be going out would be going to the garden would be going off from his disciples and praying God if there's a plan B please let's do that I don't want to do this but if that is the only way may your will be done between those two things, love one another and thy will be done. We probably have enough Christian teaching to last us for our lifetime. As we are apart, I wish you a good day. I wish you to be safe so that we can all come together again soon. And on this Holy Thursday, I ask that you might think about what Christ goes through on this evening, knowing that he is soon to be arrested, beaten, and murdered. But I'm quite sure he also knew the rest of the story. And we'll get to that on Easter Sunday. God bless you. Amen.